Water, good old H2O. But why do we call it that? Well, really because water is a compound made of two gases. One of them is oxygen, it's in the air that we breathe. The other is hydrogen, which is an explosive gas. But if you put them together and you do combine them, you end up with water, H2O. It's really as if you could magnify that and see the tiny particles of which water is made. If you did, you'd see they were like this. You would have an oxygen atom, and you'd have a hydrogen atom, and another one. And because there are two hydrogens for every oxygen, we say it's two H's, or H2O. And that's really the compound of water. And compounds are pretty hard to split up, but you can split up water with things that uh, are very easily obtained at home. Let's give it a go. First of all, tip the water into a clean, clear glass. And for this exercise, just add a little bit of salt to it. It doesn't really change a lot, but it does make it possible for electricity to flow. Then you need some electrodes. So I use aluminium foil, cut or tear two squares of it, and roll them up so you get a, really a rod of aluminium foil, and flatten them out with your fingers, and make two of those exactly the same size. Otherwise, it's not really a fair test. There they are. And I think I'm going to roll each of those up from one end to shorten their length a bit, and give me a nice, easy wad for attaching to the battery. They shouldn't be any longer than the glass. We'll give it another turn. That should be about it there. Again, roll the other one up so once again they are the same size and the same length. We should have the same amount of them dipping into the liquid, in fact. And there they are. That will do. Now they need to be fixed onto the battery. So take one of these D-cells, nice big fat one. Remember that the part with the spike is the positive end. We can hold one electrode there. The other on the other end. It would help to have about four or five hands here. If you hold them carefully, don't let them touch, put a rubber band around there, and that should clamp them into position like this. And at that point, with everything touching the battery and not touching themselves, you can lower the electrodes into the glass. We just bend them in a little bit so that they don't foul the sides. Now they need to stay there for a bit, so put two sticks over that slightly salty water, plonk them in like that, make sure everything's working properly, and you'll need to go away and leave them for a bit. And after about 10 minutes, what have we got? Well, at the front of the battery, this positive one has got a lot of bubbles on it. But the negative electrode at this end, the back of the battery, has about twice as many, even more. What's going on there? Well, in short, electricity is breaking up our water molecules. It's splitting the H's from the O's. Now, the oxygen has a negative charge, and negative charges need positive charges to neutralize them. So the oxygen has gone to the positive end of the battery, and it's appearing on that electrode. But remember, there are twice as many hydrogens as there were oxygens. Because they have a positive charge, they've gone to the negative end of the battery. And that's the hydrogen appearing on that electrode there. Notice there's about twice as much. In fact, there's slightly more than twice as much because the oxygen forming on the positive end is dissolving back into the water. But that's simply done at home, and you can show for yourself that it really is H2O. Who is it? Who is this famous botanist and monk? In his monastery garden, he was puzzled as to how plants seemed to have similarities passed on from one generation to the next. He bred and crossbred thousands of plants to see how their colour and size varied. He discovered that information about size, colour and seed shape was passed from one generation to the next in regular and predictable patterns. This science is called genetics, the study of heredity, and he's regarded as the father of genetics. He is Gregor Mendel. Curiosity.